The Little Book of Complete Bollocks Your mind is like the surface of a lake. It is calm and smooth, until anxious thoughts start ruffling the surface. Drain the lake. Empty your mind. Where there's no water, there can be no surface. Where there's no mind, there can be no anxiety. The empty head is the beginning of wisdom. Why do you always have to control how you spend your time? Why not let go and relax? If the continents can drift, why can't you? Feelings of unimportance are often caused by a lack of importance. Banish your feelings of unimportance by becoming President of the United States. You are the most important person in your life. Be as kind to yourself as you are to other people. Give yourself treats. Invite yourself out to dinner. Send yourself life-affirming emails. Ask yourself to share a holiday villa in Italy with you. Leave little love letters for yourself around the house, where you can discover them by chance while you're doing the hoovering. Ask yourself to come with you when you start your psychotherapy. Think of your negative feelings as fruits or vegetables. Your sadness is a tomato. Your anxiety is a marrow. Your guilt is a cucumber. Crush the tomato. Squash the marrow. Sit on the cucumber. When you are experiencing stress in the workplace, there is nothing more soothing than a herbal tea. Make the tea in a large mug. Add a generous spoonful of organic honey. Then pour the contents over the desktop PC of the person who's been getting on your wick. Tiredness and sluggishness can often be traced back to digestive problems. Make room in your life for your large intestine. Give it some attention. Ask it if you'd be interested in colonic irrigation. Talk to your bottom about it. Listen to your bottom before taking a decision. Explore your creativity in new ways. Paint a picture. Compose a symphony. Write a novel. Direct a movie. Build a bridge. Construct a ten-lane highway. Repoint the Great Wall of China. Make a cup of tea. Find inner peace by clenching and unclenching your buttocks at least 50 times a day. Enhance your relationship by always laughing at your partner's little jokes. If your partner's little jokes aren't funny, laugh at his little penis instead. Embrace change, but don't get into heavy petting with it. Finding the child within you can be harder than you think. Buy a cuddly toy and take it to bed with you. Use it to rediscover the child self you thought you had lost forever. Keep in touch with this child self wherever you go. Throw tantrums with people who won't let you have your way. Eat too much chocolate and be sick. Show your partner your anger by wetting the bed. The best way to find out who you are is to go up to somebody who knows who you are and say, Hello, who am I? Looking at your name in a driving license or passport is another useful way of finding out who you are. When you have negative feelings, write them down on a piece of paper. Then hold the paper above a lighted candle. As you watch the flame consume the paper, say to yourself, Goodbye, negative feelings. Then go to the front door, throw it wide open, and exclaim, Hello, positive feelings, come on in. If you find there are no positive feelings on your doorstep at that particular moment, scream out loudly, You bastards! You're supposed to be here! Do not be afraid of death. Death is merely the continuance of life, only without the breathing. Eat lots of spinach. Experience pure ecstasy by running through a meadow of wild alpine flowers. If there isn't a meadow of wild alpine flowers in your area, Try running across your back lawn. You can prolong the ecstasy by running very slowly. Share your depression with other people by giving your depression a name. You might, for instance, decide to call it Herbert. Then, when a friend calls to invite you out to dinner, you should inquire, Can Herbert come too? If your friend is non-supportive, just say something like, I'm sorry. If you can't accept that I'm in a relationship with Herbert, then I really don't want to come to dinner with you. 
Another way of dealing with your depression is to give it a less depressing name than Herbert. Loving another person does not necessarily mean putting the other person first. Authentic love is the love of another, coexisting in perfect balance with the love of the self. Help maintain that balance by not bothering to empty the bath after you've used it. Let urine be the mirror of your soul. Every Monday morning, use a chopstick to whisk a little of your urine in a white porcelain bowl. If your urine turns frothy, you have a terminal illness and will be dead by the weekend. Spring clean your mind. Brush away the cobwebs of guilt. Scrub out the stains of anxiety. Hoover up the dust of depression. Take your brain to the dry cleaners. Don't lose the ticket. We talk of the height of folly and the depths of despair. Yet why is folly high? And why is despair deep? Challenge conventional wisdom. Experience the depths of folly and the heights of despair. You are a victim because you believe you don't deserve anything better. It doesn't always have to be this way. Let somebody else be a victim for a change. Next time you're walking down a busy street, push somebody else under a bus and shout, Look, a victim, and it's somebody else. Deal with any residual guilt feelings by using Reiki healing techniques. Depression is only a problem if you decide that it's a problem. If you decide it's a comfortable old jacket, you'll find you can put it on or take it off whenever you feel like it. Then, when you feel ready, you can take your depression to the Oxfam shop and pass it on to someone in the third world. Does it feel too late to change your life? If so, put all the clocks in your house back by at least three hours. Now use those extra hours to change your life. Thinking of others can be very stressful. If you think of others all the time, you may become a victim of repetitive stress syndrome. Avoid this danger by thinking about yourself as much as possible. The old you is only the new you waiting to be undressed, or vice versa. Just think what your nose goes through in the course of a day. Dirt, dust, pollution, fumes. When you get home from a day in town, pamper your nose in all kinds of ways. Burn a joss stick. Expose your nose to the fragrance of essential oils. Let your system absorb vital bioflavonoids by inserting an organic cherry tomato into each nostril. Failure is only success waiting to happen. Next time you feel you're a failure, just say to yourself, I'm waiting to happen! Stressed out? Go outside, lie down on your back, spread your arms and legs in an X shape and stare up at the sky. Stay in that position until you can feel your connection to the infinite. If you hear the rumble of approaching traffic, you may be lying in the middle of a road. Ask the infinite if you could call back later. Make a pie chart of your love. How big a slice is devoted to you? Is the slice big enough? Why not give yourself an extra slice? Better still, why not give yourself the entire pie? You could surf the net for a thousand years and still not find the website that speaks to you. Surf your inner net for five minutes every night and you will always find a website that gives you the attention you deserve. It'll probably look something like this. www.me.com Going on a long flight, make it a unique transformational journey by changing into fresh underwear while still on the plane. If the noise from your neighbour's wind chime becomes oppressive, ring your local council and ask them to send round the feng shui control officer. Lie down in a grassy park and relax completely. Close your eyes. Access your deep inner core by listening to your breathing. After a few minutes, you will find yourself suffused by a feeling of warmth. Check to see whether you've been pissed on by a dog. Let emptiness be your friend. Empty your mind. Empty your bank account. Empty a bottle. 
Try painting your therapist a different color. Help to end world conflict by building a peace pagoda for your pet. To avoid succumbing to road rage, close your eyes and imagine you are lying in a beautiful meadow on a summer's day. Touch the blades of grass. Smell the wild flowers. See the butterflies flitting past. Hear the sound of tearing metal as you drive into the car in front of you. We can't be sensible all the time. Every now and then, throw caution to the wind and buy yourself twice as much tofu as you really need. Don't condemn others for their actions unless you know the cause. That masked man waving a gun in the bank may just be having an allergic reaction to pollen. Planning to travel? Why not stay at home and go on a beautiful meditation journey instead? It's cheaper, it's more fulfilling, and you won't have to meet other people. Your body is a superb instrument. Why not invite it to join an orchestra? If you are a male aged between 40 and 50, you may experience a sudden loss of libido. Don't panic. Ask your secretary if she's seen it. Check under the sofa. Report your loss to the police. Consider offering a reward for the safe return of your libido. If, after six months, there's still no sign of it, take up gardening. Loneliness is only the absence of other people. You are alone because you choose to be alone. Those people across the road having a great party are only projecting their loneliness onto other people. Spare a thought for the emptiness of their lives as you curl up snugly with a mug of fennel tea and a copy of the Little Book of Calm. You don't really need makeup. Celebrate your authentic face by frightening people on the street. Your computer's crashed? Your hard disk may be suffering from a cosmic imbalance or virus. Restore your computer to health by taking the following steps. 1. Place a healing crystal on top of your VDU. 2. Clear your PC's negative aura by lighting a joss stick. 3. Reinvigorate your mouse by massaging it with essential oils. 4. Energize your CD-ROM drive by intoning ancient Hindu mantras. 5. Buy a new computer. Use transcendental harmonics and resonance healing techniques to get your shoes repaired. Trust your feelings. Give them space to express themselves. Let them go out to the shops on their own. But tell them not to take sweets from strangers. Sometimes what we perceive as sexual infidelity is merely a reaffirmation of our essential humanity. If you have been unfaithful to your partner, be completely honest and open. Explain to your partner the circumstances and how you feel now. If you've been reaffirming your essential humanity with large numbers of people, it might be best to get your partner to attend an anger management course before you go into all the details. We often forget how hard life can be for an office junior or some other young person in the place where we work. When people make mistakes, it doesn't always help to reproach them for it. In fact, you'll be astonished how encouraging a few kind words can be. After all, you don't have to mean them. Get the most out of life by becoming very rich. To cleanse your mind of verbal accretions and to deconstruct unnecessary verbalizations, talk gibberish for at least 20 minutes every day. Don't be embarrassed if friends and colleagues can't understand what you're saying. Turn it into a game. See if they can guess when you're talking gibberish and when you're talking normally. Show your animal companion your appreciation by taking him or her with you on your next tantric studies weekend. Sit down in the lotus position facing a full-length mirror. In complete silence, stare at your own face in the mirror without blinking. For three or four hours, nothing will happen. Persist. After four to six hours, 
The face in the mirror will start to roll its eyes, and its tongue will flop out of its mouth. Do not be alarmed. This is perfectly normal. Persist. After seven to eight hours, the face in the mirror will suddenly become distorted and appear to be screaming. Do not be alarmed. This is perfectly normal. Persist. After eight to ten hours, the face in the mirror will come to meet yours. It will feel as if you are bashing your head repeatedly into a glass object. You will now find yourself in an altered state of consciousness. This is known as unconsciousness. It is followed by another higher state known as hospital. Satisfy your inner child by eating ten tubes of Smarties. Each organ of your body has a vital part to play in your well-being. Make sure all your organs work in harmony together. Make your heart talk to your head. Get your pancreas to chat to your liver. Invite your gallbladder to email your ovaries. If your lower intestine receives anonymous calls, you should see a doctor immediately. Forgiveness can be fun. Throw a forgiveness party for the person who has done you wrong. With your friends as witnesses, hold hands with your former enemy and say goodbye to your anger. Get your friends to shout, Goodbye, anger! Throw a funeral party for your lost anger. Lay aside one day a month as your very own day of stillness. Close the curtains. Take the phone off the hook. Don't read books or newspapers. Don't eat or drink anything. Don't watch TV. Don't listen to the radio. Don't do anything. It's okay to pick your nose a little. Connect with others by gluing your forehead to somebody else's. Don't know what to do with your life? Why not share it with a budgie or other animal companion? A six-rod wind chime or crystal can also be excellent company. What's more, both can be left for long periods on their own. Have you considered harnessing the healing power of the cosmos? No? Then go out and harness it now! Nature offers you choices. You can frolic with the dolphins or bask with the sharks. Which would you rather do? Why? Write your answer on a piece of paper and throw it into the sea. If there's a litter bin near the beach, throw it into the litter bin instead. It's okay to be you. It's not okay to be somebody else. Spare a thought for all those people who are somebody else. It must be just awful for them. Without knowing it, you may be ascribing to other people the feelings you are experiencing yourself. Because you hate yourself, you think other people hate you. This is known as projection. Sometimes, of course, other people really do hate you. This is known as hatred. There's not much you can do about it. You're probably just the sort of person that people hate. Before going on a long car journey, you do some basic checks. Is the tank full of gas? Are the lights working? Are the tyres at the right pressure? Is there enough oil to make the engine run smoothly? Is the windscreen washer working? Similarly, before you embark on a long-term relationship, run a few checks on yourself. Have I filled up my tank with love? Can I see my way ahead? Have I pumped up my commitment to the right level? Are all my moving parts fully lubricated? Ought I to take a shower first? Getting in touch with your true feelings is like learning to swim. Once you have learned how to do it, you will never forget. Of course, if there are sharks around, knowing how to swim isn't going to help you much. Your mind is like a motorway. Sometimes it can be jammed by too much traffic. Avoid the jams by never using your mind on a bank holiday weekend. Program your video with love. Change your channels with compassion. Talk to your answering machine. Make love to your CD-ROM drive. Switch the power off first. Let your life be filled with music. Install a speaker in your bathroom so you can listen to your favourite CD in the bath. Take a Walkman or portable CD player with you when you travel. 
Listen to the harmony of the spheres while shopping. Sing extracts from La Boheme to the checkout girl at Tesco's. Hum your favorite tune while eating in a restaurant. Whistle cheerfully during sexual intercourse. Make space for pain in your life. If you feel just fine, seek out a counselor or therapist who will explore with you the reasons why you are denying your pain. A dysfunctional family is not a family that fails to function. A dysfunctional family is a family that fails to function for you. Make your family function for you by asking family members to rub essential oils into your thighs. If anyone refuses, ask them why they feel threatened by your thighs. Your partner will only truly respect you if you set limits. Make your boundaries clear. Explain to your partner that they must seek permission before touching you intimately. Assert your need for personal space by painting a black line down the middle of the bed. Affirm your specialness by asking your partner to look after the cat while you spend your summer holiday in a Zen monastery or interfaith retreat. If your partner feels threatened by your legitimate need for self-exploration, explain that you need to be at one with yourself before you can be at one with anyone else. When you hear the front door slam, call out to your ex-partner, thanking them for understanding your need for personal space. Sadness is a bad place to be. Happiness is a good place to be. To get out of the bad place, leave it and go to the good place instead. There may not be a bus service running between the bad place and the good place, so be prepared for a long walk. Learn to say yes to yourself. If yourself gets too demanding, learn to say, we'll see, or not right now, or maybe later. Your feet deserve more love than they get. Make your feet feel loved and needed by soaking them in a mixture of warm aloe vera juice, jojoba cream, liquidized artichoke hearts, and tea tree oil. Afterwards, make a delicious and nourishing soup with it and invite your friends round to share this affirmation of your uniqueness. If your partner dies, ease your grief by starting a herb garden. You are the most important person you will ever meet. Why not ask yourself for an autograph? Tell yourself it's not for you, it's for your inner child. Each morning, write down ten useful things that you would like to achieve that day. At the end of the day, look at the list. If you haven't achieved any of your ten aims, throw the list away and write instead a list of ten completely useless things that you did that day. Now put a tick opposite each of them. Pin this list on your bedroom wall and fall asleep secure in the knowledge that you are an achiever. Stress and conflict come from thinking too much about the future. Whenever possible, cherish the moment, possess the moment, stay in the moment. If there's a large clock around, open it up and get inside. If you feel stale and depressed, try buying less. At first you'll find it difficult, but gradually you'll be able to buy so little that your standard of living will be the same as that of an Indian villager. Experience the simplicity of extreme poverty for three days. Start buying again. Before going to bed at night, take all your clothes off and stand in front of your bedroom mirror. Relax, close your eyes, and breathe deeply. Now visualize yourself walking along a beautiful sandy beach. You see an attractive and successful person coming out of the water. The attractive and successful person is also completely naked. You realize the attractive and successful person is you. Now open your eyes and look in the mirror. You will be amazed to catch sight of an attractive and successful person. Call the police and tell them an attractive and successful person has broken into your bedroom. When preparing a meal, be sure to establish a positive relationship with your ingredients. Respect your bean shoots. Empathize with your aubergines. Enter into a dialogue with your marrow. Get feedback from your fennel. But don't take any crap from your artichokes. 
Nurture your friendships by sending out a monthly round robin to all those who love and cherish you for who you are. Include details of your bowel movements. Never lose belief in yourself. Every morning, stand in front of your bathroom mirror and say to yourself, I am talented and beautiful. People adore me. I am popular because I deserve to be popular. Repeat this ten times. Don't tell anyone you're doing this. Nobody wants to be friends with a sad bastard who talks to himself in mirrors. During long air journeys, endear yourself to crew and passengers alike by introducing those around you to the ancient power of group chant. Going on a first date? Before you leave the house, give your immune system a boost by eating lots of raw garlic. Before that important work meeting, boost your confidence by reading a few pages from the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Make sure you are entirely alone in the house. Stand in a circle. Hold hands with yourself. Write a letter to yourself. Phone yourself. Talk to yourself. Shoot yourself. Your parents are older than you. Treat them with respect. Ask them to give you the same respect as you give them. If they fail to do this, check out the old people's homes in your area. Let your parents know you're doing this. They'll quickly become more attuned to your emotional needs. Your psychic energy is divided into yin and yang. Most people are either mostly yin or mostly yang. Yin is the channeler. Yang is the healer. If you want to channel your healing... Get your yin to talk to your yang. If you want to heal your channels, get your yang to talk to your yin. If you want to experience psychic peace, tell them both to shut up. Choose an email address that reflects your true self. Here's one suggestion. I.am at one dot with dot myself. Unresolved issues in the workplace can be a source of great tension for you and your colleagues. Achieve closure by slamming a door in the face of somebody less important than you. Realize your full human potential by going on a craniosacral therapy weekend. If you find yourself constantly hitting your partner over the head with a heavy iron frying pan, you may be deficient in essential gender conflict resolution skills. Hone your gender conflict resolution skills by giving your partner a warning thwack on the shins before hitting them over the head. Get pleasure out of the little things in life. Stand on an ant. Ten minutes of Mongolian vibration chanting before breakfast will do wonders for your skin tone. Feeling tired and listless? Your energy is being blocked by energy blocks. Find new energy by unblocking your energy blocks. Once your energy blocks are unblocked, try to find out why you are experiencing energy blocks in the first place. If you don't have the energy to find out why you are experiencing energy blocks in the first place, it could be that your energy is being blocked by new energy blocks. At this point, it's probably best to give up. Live once in Paris. Live once in Rio. Live once in Bogota. It's generally considered wise to do Bogota last. Feeling bad about yourself? You're probably suffering from low self-esteem. Give your self-esteem a boost by making lots of delicious rhubarb jam. Do you ever catch yourself staring aimlessly into the fridge? If so, remember this. You may find butter in your fridge. You may find cheese in your fridge. You may find vegetables in your fridge, but you will not find answers in your fridge. Instead, thank your fridge for the gift of coolness. Have you ever wondered why the Dyson vacuum cleaner has become so popular? Could it be because you can actually see the dirt you've removed from your home? When you're clearing out your inner debris, don't just vacuum up your negative feelings. Dyson them! If what you're clearing out is too horrible to look at, ask a friend with seeing difficulties to do your Dysoning for you. 
Let go of your fear. Let go of your tension. Let go of your inhibitions. Let go of your job. Let go of your husband. Let go of your wife. Let go of your parents. Let go of your children. Let go of your home. Let go of your money. Let everything go. Talk to a friend before embarking on this. You are the only person who loves you unconditionally. You are the only person who accepts you absolutely. You are the only person who wants to be with you 24 hours a day. You are the only person who wants to look in your handkerchief after you've blown your nose. Congratulations! You are probably the most tolerant person you will ever meet. Sometimes when you are depressed, you feel you're going to be depressed forever. This is an illusion. You won't be depressed after you're dead, as far as we know. The biggest and most exciting region left to discover is the unknown territory of your mind. Explore your mind. Leave a note with a friend or neighbor with details of where you're heading. Love is not just a feeling. Love is a powerful tool. Show your powerful tool to people and ask them to admire it. If they don't want to look at it, put it away again. Do you find your emotional flow blocked by unwanted pain? Unblock your flow by asking a friend to be your feelings facilitator. If your friend refuses, release your emotions by screaming loudly for ten minutes. Afterwards, write a loving letter to your friend, explaining in a non-judgmental way why you feel let down. Men and women are different. See also by the same author, Men are from bars, women have no penis. Published by Bollocks Books Limited, price nine ninety nine. Your body belongs to you and not to anyone else. Don't let anyone borrow it unless you want it to be borrowed. If someone does borrow it, insist that they bring it back on time. Learn to be non-judgmental about yourself. If you lose your temper and punch someone in the teeth, don't torture yourself with feelings of guilt. Instead, observe yourself carefully next time you're punching someone in the teeth and ask yourself, what is it about the other person that makes me want to punch them in the teeth? Enter into dialogue with the other person, helping them to come to terms with their unacknowledged feelings of aggression towards you. If they refuse to enter into dialogue with you, punch them in the teeth again. Sit in a park on a warm summer's day and watch a bumblebee go from flower to flower. What can you learn from the bumblebee? Basically, fuck all. Understand the importance of non-verbal messaging. Give people the sound cues which reveal your mood. If you are happy, ululate in people's ears. If you are anxious, make moaning noises. If you are depressed, fart loudly and persistently. On your way home from work, pluck a leaf from a tree. Examine it. What shape is it? What color is it? Ask yourself, what life experiences has this leaf been through? Pluck another leaf. Look at it. Ask yourself, what journey has this leaf made? Pluck a third leaf. Turn it over in your hand. Ask yourself, why do I feel unconditional love for a leaf? Go home. Get a life. Make space for yourself by getting rid of the clutter in your life. Throw away your unwanted clothes. Burn your old files. Clear out the rubbish in your attic. Dispose of your grandmother. Stressed by the pressures of bringing up a family. Enhance your parenting skills by making quality time for yourself. Lay aside three to four hours every evening when you can sit alone in a room and read, listen to music, or meditate. Before you start, leave the children in front of a video with an organic baked potato. Explain that you cannot be there for them unless you are there for yourself. If the children develop disruptive behavior patterns, seek the help of a child psychiatrist. You might also consider having them adopted. Political revolution is easy. Spiritual revolution is hard. By fighting to free yourself from childhood trauma, 
you're fighting for spiritual revolution, which is the only true means of change. Be proud. You are a freedom fighter. Try to avoid the word terrorist. There is no such thing as inappropriate grief. Losing a friend can lead to feelings of great sadness. Losing a sock can also be distressing. In the same way that you make space to mourn your friends, make space to mourn your socks. Harness the natural synergy of raw vegetables in order to purge your body of toxins. The more raw vegetables you eat in combination, the more powerful will be the purging. Try the potent combination of raw onions, raw beets, raw potatoes, raw celeriac, raw leeks, raw parsnips, raw sorrel, and raw Chinese artichokes. This combination is particularly efficacious the night before a major stress event, such as an exam or interview, since it means you will be too ill to attend it. Confront your pain by drawing a picture of it. Hang it on the wall in a prominent position. Invite friends to your home to look at it. Ask them to tell you what it says to them. If people stop coming to your house, share your pain with your cat instead. Laughter is often the best medicine. Find a person much poorer than you and laugh at them. The clothes you wear reveal a great deal about the sort of person you are. Surprise other people by taking all your clothes off before you go out. Never underestimate the healing powers of custard. Seek beauty in a raindrop, but buy a new coat. Your mind is a garden, and like a garden, it needs your love and attention. Mow the garden of your mind on a regular basis, and pull out weeds whenever they appear. If your neighbour uses a strimmer, ask if you can borrow it. Be careful to avoid unwanted lobotomies. Make room for flowers in your life. On your way home from work, buy a single daffodil, put it in a vase on your kitchen table, and sit silently for the whole evening, contemplating the beauty of the flower while absorbing its precious yang energy. To heighten your pleasure, sip from a glass of homemade barley water, round the evening off with a bowl of boiled buckwheat, sprinkled with nourishing sesame seeds. As you go to bed, give yourself a hug. If you still feel sad, try line dancing. Most string instruments improve with age. Think of yourself as a violin, growing more melodious and resonant with every passing year. Then think of yourself being picked up and handled by some rattled musician with thinning hair and bad teeth. Don't think about this anymore. Remember that anger can be your friend. Talk to your anger. Give your anger a soothing cup of sage and lemon tea. Take your anger out for a walk with you. Buy your anger a new pullover. Explain to your anger that you have needs too. Don't be afraid to shout back at your anger. Once your anger sees sense, reward it by binging on chocolate digestives. Before you go to bed, give your anger a hug. The inner self is only the outer self turned inside out. Light a candle and think about this. Deal with your inner stress by indulging your senses. Look for a rainbow. Stroke a piece of silk. Listen to a cat purring. Sniff a newly cut rose. If no one is around, do drugs. Have a t-shirt made with your personal mission statement on it. Wear it to parties. Feels good, doesn't it? But can your whole life be summed up in a t-shirt? No, you're a bigger person than that. You'd better have two t-shirts. Get in touch with yourself by touching yourself. If somebody is watching, stop touching yourself. The sky is blue for a reason. Blue light is a source of strength and harmony in the cosmos. Create a blue light in your life by telephoning the police. Break through to a whole new life in less than a day. Here's how. Buy ten self-help books. Take them home. Put them in a pile on the floor. Sit on them. Watch television.